Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker, and John's on the left of your screen. And uh, in between us is Ron Hyland from the 51st District, which is the Wamigo area. And we thank you so much for, for coming in. Thank you. And uh, as you know, we didn't have legislative updates last week, but we do this week. And I know you guys have been awfully, awfully busy going on with the legislature. So, John, where do you want to start? Oh, well, uh, I'm going to start with just Fed and State, some of the things that uh, my committee uh, accomplished this week. We, uh, we had some hearings. We passed out uh, three or four bills on Wednesday. Uh, a couple of bills were of interest. One of them was a uh, rules and regs bill. With all the rules and regs, we had we already passed a const, uh, House concurrent resolution, where if it passes, it'll go on the ballot to give us more control over the rules and regs. Uh, this bill ha has a uh, five-year sunset. Every rules and regs that's been passed by the administration or their agencies has to be reviewed in five years. Uh, the administration did come in when it was in opposition. Yeah. Uh, but we did pass it out of committee, and it'll probably probably be run on the floor next week. We had another bill, which is a land transfer, which is land transfer, which is the per, you know purview of Fed and State from the Shawnee from the State Historical Society to the Shawnee Tribe. It's in Shawnee, Kansas, and it's a, it's an old burial ground for the Shawnee Tribe, and. Uh, so the Historical Society would like to transfer the land title back to the Shawnee tribe. The chief came in and testified they would like it. There were some concerns of whether they would put a casino on it or not. Uh, so uh, I addressed that with an amendment that they can't do that. Uh, so it did pass out. And we passed out uh, a few other bills. Been working on the redistricting committee this week that I serve on. Uh, I think we'll have our bill out and probably on the floor next week. I think uh, it, it's kind of an agreed upon bill between the Republicans and the Democrats. So we expect to get about 110 votes. Uh, on the floor, we did cut a little taxes this week. Uh, a lot of uh, companies have self-funded uh, insurance for their employees. And the state has always taxed that money. So this week we came in with a bill that uh, we cut the taxes on that because it will lower the cost of the employers for the health care. And it's self-funded. <clears throat> we passed a House concurrent resolution 5032, uh, which is just lending our support for uh, Ukraine uh, with the invasion there by the by the Russians. Uh, I think I have my my colors on today. Uh, we did. Uh, we also worked the bill on the floor on uh, porch thefts. Uh, you probably watch TV where they have cameras and uh, packages get delivered to their porch. Right. Uh, and then they, so we increased the penalties on that. Uh, so that was good, and hopefully we can we can uh, catch those fellows and ladies, whoever do it, and be able to prosecute them. And we uh, we had a couple of other bills, uh, uh, but next week uh, is our final week. Uh, we're going to be there uh, on the floor all day. Uh, then we'll have our first adjournment, of course, and then we all go home for three weeks, give the governor an opportunity to veto any of those bills, and then we come back in for the veto session. And that's when we'll be taking up the tax cuts. The, the uh, uh, tax committee last night uh, kicked out a couple of uh, tax cut bills. Uh, so, you know, we want to try to get those passed next week. So if the governor vetoes them, we'll have time to come back in and, and rework those. Appropriations has really been working hard. They were working, uh, they, you know, they'll work their normal hours in the morning and then they were coming back at six o'clock at night working. Uh, uh, on into the evening, huh? Yeah, long into the evenings. I, I didn't. Yesterday we had a meeting on, on redistricting at five o'clock and so we didn't get out of there to 6.30 or seven o'clock. So it made a late, late night, but I'm glad we got the agreement from the Democrats and so. Uh, that's going to help us in passing the bill, but it's been busy, and uh, Ron, uh, Ron's been busy too. He's been <laughs> there every day. Uh, I'm glad to see he's here. He's the chairman of Water, which uh, is a good deal, and he always brings some good information to us. He always does. I'm always glad to have right. you here, Ron. And and I, John, I got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, 
In regards to the redistricting, where there's 110 potential votes for that, does it still go into the courts then to be reviewed? It, for it, it does. Uh, if we pass it out, the governor, of course, has to sign it. She would have an option of vetoing it. And then if she chooses not to veto it, it goes straight to the Supreme Court to make sure they have a criteria that all the deviations are less than 5%. 5% plus or 5% minus on the amount of population. And uh, they'll look at other uh, things that they, which isn't their criteria to look at. But if they approve it, then it goes back uh, to the county clerks and they'll have to start moving precincts. And of 125 districts, every district had changes. That's just a little well, bit. Well, I would imagine, right. yeah. All right, we're going to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker, and that's John on the, the left on your screen. And in between is Ron Hyland from the um, 51st District out of uh, Wamego. And by the way, how, how is Wamego holding up? How's all it going? Wamego is growing, uh, and that's part of the reason in redistricting they had to reshuffle a mine. Uh, we grew in population mostly from the Wamego to Manhattan area, which is growing rapidly. But Wamego itself is also growing. Uh, we have good industry there, and we're in good shape. That's good. We're in good shape. Hmm. That's good. Well, I know you are a, a retired vet, uh, veterinarian, and uh, so what what committees are you on? Well, I'm on uh, Commerce, Labor, and Economic Development Committee. And in that committee, we've been very busy, but we've had bills this year that some have come over from the judiciary and some mm -hmm. others from other areas, some from Fed and State, which I didn't understand, but we took care of them. <laughs> we took care of them. Uh, the two last week that uh, uh, might be of interest, the first one is that we passed a consumer protection bill out of there, mm -hmm. which means all the folks that are stealing from the stores, and then they go out and try to sell them. And so we put together a bill that if those folks that are stealing from these stores and then putting them online to sell them, they will have to have a tax ID number. And then the sellers will have to uh, ca uh, catalog all that information so that it can be reported if necessary. Are you talking about like shoplifters or people just coming in and taking it? Well, in California, they said it's not a crime if it's what, under a thousand dollars? Yeah, under a thousand. A thousand dollars a clip, it adds up and then they put oh. it on the internet. So. It's become a big problem in a lot of areas. In fact, it, a lot of stores in California have closed because yeah. of it. But anyway, uh, businesses came to us. Amazon and, and uh, Walmart came to us and asked us if we could do something like that. And so we worked with them and there was back and forth, but we got it done, we passed it out. It'll go to the floor next week as well. And then we passed a bill out, squeak by getting out. I don't know what's gonna happen to it. It's the plastic bag bill. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Where Familiar with that one. Wichita and Lawrence have been rumored to think about outlawing plastic bags in their cities. And businesses have come in and said, we want to put a stop to this. So they want a law passed within the state that no municipality can outlaw plastic bags. Uh, we'll see what happens to that one. It's, that'll be a mess. I, I, I guess the obvious question for me would be, well, trash bags are all uh, plastic bags? And yes. Is that what they're talking about? That and all the fast food places and the plastic bag grocery stores. Wow. Everywhere. So we'll see what happens on that one. Okay. And then uh, in tax, I'm on the tax committee as well. And we have been passing out all kinds of bills lately. And it's the trend now everybody comes in they want a tax exemption all the 501c's come in everybody's coming in and they tug at your heartstrings a lot of them are deserving but uh, these add up right now i did the numbers on that one it's about five or six billion dollars a total of 10 billion 10 for billion. all the exemptions yeah. we've well, given through the years yeah. 10 billions a year is what we're losing in revenue because we have all these exemptions right. both tax and property tax, income tax, and sales tax. Add them all up, it's a big number. It is. But uh, well, Dan Hawkins and I had a bill a few years ago where we'd go back in every five years and review all those tax exemptions, and you would have thought, I mean, more people was on us, so yes. uh, the bill went nowhere. Whenever you start talking about 
reducing the exemptions. You right. get skewered yeah. pretty you well. Do. You do. Uh, the other bill that we worked on and passed out just yesterday was the uh, food tax bill. The governor wants to take all food tax down immediately. But we look at the numbers on that, that's about $500 million a year that we would lose in revenue. Kansas would lose? Yes. And so we look at that, and you look at the future and you say, when's our next recession? Well, it could be any time. We know it's coming. So we looked at that and we said, well, let's do that in a stepwise manner. So we put a bill out that will reduce it down 2% to 3.5 immediately, and then 1% a year after that. So in, in about four years, we could take it down to zero. But our stipulation is that our rainy day fund has to have $100 million in it. Well, we as a legislature are putting $600 million in that rainy day account this year. So the chances are pretty good that that'll happen in four years' time. But we didn't want to do it all at once. We just didn't know what the future would bring. Water is the committee that I chair. And we had a bill ready to go, and then uh, my committee gutted it, took everything out of it. And so we are still negotiating on that one. Uh, the ag community came out in force, and I'm talking primarily the Farm Bureau and the KLA, and said they don't like it, they don't want it. So we're negotiating with them. Some, what we've learned through all those years of study is that the Ogallala Aquifer is uh, depleting rapidly. We've learned that our dams are silting in. We have to do something with all of that. And uh, there was a lack of meaningful organization. I tried to fix all that, but nobody wanted it at this time. When the crisis happened, the template's there. It'll be ready to go. Uh, I had a thrift plan. It's a thrift saving plan. It's similar to a 401k that okay. I've been working on for four years. I could not gain any traction in the House, so the Senate Tax Committee Chair took it. And they passed it out there, out of their committee, on Thursday, and it'll go to the floor. We'll see what happens on that. And that's, and we can get into capers how much debt we have there and how many billions we put in there. But yeah. it's a serious situation. Right. Hmm. That's true. Especially uh, we, we did put an additional billion dollars into capers this year, and that saves us like 90 to 130 million dollars a year and cost saving because we don't have to pay the interest. Wow. So, wow, that's, that's tremendous. The second billion we put in yes. since we've been in the right. legislature. Oh my goodness. We're going to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with co-host John Barker. And in between us is, uh, of course, uh, our friend from the 51st District, Ron. Nice to have you here. Thank you. And uh, you've been in the legislature now like John and I've been in. This is our tenth year. Tenth year. I was thinking it was about eleven years coming up, and I'm sure there's some days it feels like it's been thirty years. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> because true. it's a lot of work. And I've, I know I've told you guys this before, but we thank you so much for taking time out of your lives to be able to come in and represent the districts you do. John represents the 70th. You're at the 51st, and and uh, what a what a difference it is to have people who have been in for a number of years who work the way up in the committees, and then have a good understanding and the contacts of that, that's important. I know anybody that comes in has to start somewhere and uh, work up from there, but I appreciate everything you're doing because a lot of things as I listen to what you guys are saying, it's just like, well, how's that, how's that work? You know, how's that work? <laughs> that's what you don't get in the newspaper. <laughs> yeah, right. that's right. That's exactly yeah. right. That's why we do this on Fridays so that the word can get out as quickly as we can and then get it straight, straight here. Mm -hmm. So where do you want to go to now? Oh, uh, I was going to talk a little bit about a bill that I've heard this week, uh, the Sanctuary City Bill. Uh, a few, some time ago, the city of, uh, well, uh, it's city county government of Wyandotte County passed a resolution uh, not allowing their police to confer with federal authorities, particularly the immigration authorities, what's called ICE, on any of their arrests. Uh, the Attorney General uh, brought in a bill, uh, Derek Smith, and said that you know they can't do that. So we actually had a hearing on the bill. Uh, the Attorney General came in in person and, and testified the, the need for it uh, and the dangers of not of, of allowing that type of conduct. You know, uh, 
felons could be getting away. Right. You know, you arrest somebody, and I explained to you about a, a domestic violence case where the victim was beat up, probably, I'm just saying, could be either either side, but if, for example, the, the husband was there, uh, they arrest him on domestic violence, which is a misdemeanor, battery, uh, and she tells the police, you know, he's wanted by the federal authorities, particularly immigration or whatever. Mm -hmm. They would not be allowed to contact that agency to find if they have a hold on him. I know the American Civil Liberties Union come to visit with me and say, well, they don't have a warrant. I said, no, they have a hold which is the same, means they'll get a warrant. Uh, but uh, there's just difference of opinion. Uh, we had four or five uh, proponents, Secretary of State. Uh, they were issuing a, uh, a city ID card um, and to be able to use for banking. And, and, but you don't know if the name they chose is the, is the real name. So it had some problems. Uh, we did work the bill yesterday, and it, it's out of committee. And uh, it'll be on the floor of the House next week, I think. But, uh, but that was an interesting hearing. We had a lot of locals from Wyandotte County that appeared in opposition uh, of the bill. But uh, I think uh, police should always be able to communicate between the different federal, state, and, and uh, cities. Should all be able to communicate openly on every arrest. So we'll see how that goes. Well, I hope it goes that way yeah. because it would only make sense to me if you're a law enforcement and you're called out and you're writing a misdemeanor and you didn't realize it, but here's somebody with a very serious felony right. and you get a call back and say, well, there's been a killing over here. And exactly. then, had yeah. I have known, we would have yeah. avoided that. Exactly. Uh, or could have went back into the same situation and went back on the domestic and killed uh, the other person. That's so correct. Had he made that call to see if there was a hold, uh, yeah. may have not have happened. Yeah. We yeah. would have prevented it. And then, and then when, of course, when it comes out in the paper, why well, then the, the person reading it, like all of us, would be, well, why didn't they, why yeah. didn't they find this guy if he was wanted for these things? What, well, why did that not happen? Exactly. And protect somebody else for that was going through that. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So, so hopefully this bill will be run on the floor. We'll get it to the Senate and see if they can get it run. And uh, I don't know if the governor will sign it or not. Uh, but, you know, we don't try, we, we're never successful. So. Right, yeah. right. And I know Ron's got a number of other things going on. Well, not a number, but on the Commerce Committee, we we did contact the Secretary of Commerce and mm -hmm. ask, where's the apex? Ah, yes. Where's that, where is it now? Because you told us it would be March 15th when, mm -hmm. it, when they made a decision. And that's for this mysterious company that they're ch selecting between Oklahoma and Kansas. Right. And we were told that now the decision will be at the end of the month. Yeah. And, and that's the one we dedicated $1.2 billion yes. to. Yes. So. And that's part of the reason, in fact, we've been holding off on things because that's $1.2 billion there, put a billion in capers. Before long, the money's going to be gone. So yeah. we need to be a little careful in how much <laughs> money we give away. Did, did you get an answer to your question? What, would it be the end of March that you'll know, presumably? Or well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Of course. <laughs> well, the, you know, the Secretary of Commerce is also the Lieutenant Governor. Right. Uh, and uh, so we, we, this is a difficult vote. And I mentioned when we talked about this before, yeah. it's either the best vote I ever made or the worst vote I ever made. That's right. Uh, but it's a gamble, but if we could bring in 5,000 or 4,000 jobs to the state of Kansas, that would be a good deal in the long run. In the term, long run. Mm -hmm. In the long term. Yeah. Uh, and we put enough safeguards in there that if they should leave early or whatever, then there's a crawlback uh, uh, a clause in there that we could get some of the money back. Right. That was my amendment. I told them. It was your amendment. I told them I wouldn't vote for it unless this amendment's on here, that if they leave after 10 years, they're going to give money back. Right. Cerner, we lost out because they left after 10 years. Right. And you didn't have that provision in there at the time. It in there, right. Well, that certainly would make sense then why you would want to have it in there. We're going to cut away. We're going to take a break and we will be back. You're watching Legislative Updates. See you in just a minute. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. This will be our last segment of this show. And uh, it's good to be have you folks come in again and uh, John appreciate it appreciate it that you bring people in every week that gives us diversity of uh, the the uh, 
actions yeah. that they're taking, and uh, it's tremendous. Who's going to be up next week? Uh, next week, uh, Kelly Warren, Senator Kelly Warren from Johnson County, who's the chair, chair lady of uh, the Judiciary Committee, and the Judiciary Committee is one of the busiest committees that we have. When I was chairman of the House Judiciary, it was just it, number of bills that you get are crazy. Uh, but I also want to remind you on the 22nd of April, we're going to have Tracy Mann here. Uh, our congressman, and I think uh, we've got a lot of questions. We do. Uh, we we do. talked about them earlier. We've got some interesting questions we want to <laughs> yeah, ask. Yeah, we we probably won't get to ask those, but yeah, maybe, not, maybe, but maybe we will. We'll see. I want Ron, to ask about Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we were both talking about, so we'll see. We'll see you next week for legislative updates, and you can check out the contact information for both Ron and John, and they're on the screen throughout this show. Thank you. <laughs>